Lee, I'm going to go back to you. What gem have you got next for number four? I don't even know what's coming. You know what album's coming next, didn't you? Maybe your favourite album from theirs, Dan. I don't know, but it's got to be Frontiers. Frontiers. Yes, yes. I'm going to go to that album. Um, and this came. This album came out in February, on February the first in 1983. Eighth studio album, obviously. This this is we talk about heaviness here. Then so this is about as, as heavy as Journey get probably. Edge of the Blade. It's just man. I mean, it's gritty, isn't it? Yeah, and then then drums kick in and the synths kick in, and then you basically get this. This was a B side to Faithfully, by the way, and I think I heard this. That was the first time I heard. I this. didn't know that. Was it? Yeah, it was it's just <laughs> yeah. I was just checking out. I mean, it can't get a lot differently than that. Can you? Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, but the trade off between Sean and Perry got him just like soaring them guitars, and then Perry just matching him. It's just amazing. Edge of the Blade is probably. Again, around that time, the heaviest they probably got. They had it nailed from yeah, escape, yeah. pushing it to frontiers. They went, let's push the envelope even further. Yeah, and yeah, you're agreed. right. They just, and Edge of the Blade is absolutely I- iconic and a song that always reminds me. And if it isn't on his list, I'll eat my hat if that song is not on Mark's <laughs> list. But sorry to preempt anything, Mark, but every time I hear Edge of the Blade, if I'm sitting here in the man cave, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got the record spinning. I always think of Mark with Edge of the Blade because I know he's a big fan of that song, but we, we won't do any spoilers just yet. We'll see, no. we'll see if he's got it on, but fantastic, <laughs> fantastic choice, Nick. Number four, Mark, what you got for us, mate? Throw Actually, it on. It, this might be another uh, surprise. Uh, I'm going to go to Algeri now, uh, Arrival. Start off track, uh, Higher Place. Um and I saw him on that tour. This shirt is 23 years old, by the way. When I first heard that they had replaced Steve Perry, I, I thought to myself, how can, how can that be? I, I vividly remember they said they're starting a new journey with a new singer, and they they showed clips of the uh, live show from uh, Las Vegas that was released on a DVD. And they showed clips of Higher Place, and then the uh, the ballad uh, all the way. Yeah. And uh, when I heard that, I was like, now that's what I want to hear from Jeremy. Um, it's a, and of course, as soon as that album was released, I, I, I think I probably bought it the day it was released or, you know, within the first week for sure. And when I popped it in the CD player and the song kicked off, I said, yeah, that maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe they can carry on. <laughs> uh, he sounds a lot like Perry. I'm not going to say he was a Perry clone, uh, but he had enough of a similarity that it gave you that journey feel. But a uh, higher place is just a rocking song. Uh, it's just a, it's a perfect song for journey. Uh, I gravitate, you know, toward the, the more heavier stuff anyway. Uh, and that, that whole album is, is actually, pretty amazing well it's it's cool because i think you're right in terms of a, a, a jerry coming in because i think dean castronovo uh kind of referred to him in that vh1 documentary as perry yeah. with a perm right. you know which i thought was a perfect right. description of that but yeah. you know you were coming in hot with your t- with your number five and your number four here mark because you know for the for the perry purists that might watch this channel you know you're going to get lynched Oh, yeah, they you were going in with Arnell, you're going in with, but I like that. You see, what, what I love about the three of us is that we've always been like this on videos. We bring something a little bit different, Mark. You've always been the heavier, uh, Lee, I think you kind of sit somewhere in, kind of in the middle sometimes a little bit. And we know uh, my sensibilities are kind of more pop rock flavors. That's that's just the way we are. But- and I, I'm just going to say, obviously, I saw him on that tour. Uh, I've seen... I think I've seen Journey a total of seven times over the years. Saw him twice with Perry, once with Algeri, once with Jeff Scott Soto, and then three times with Darnell. Uh, Here we go, Darren. Just keep, just keep rubbing it in, Mark. You know, like just, yeah, yeah. He, he's only saw him the twice with Perry, Lee. Just twice. That's yeah, all. When, but when was that, Mark? When was that? When did you see him with Perry? When did I see him with Perry? With Perry? Yeah. 83 and 86. Oh. <laughs> 83. That must have been pretty oh. good, that. Is that the one where Brian Adams was on tour with them? Yeah, yeah. He, oh. opened, he opened the show. Yeah, I saw him on my birthday, as a matter of fact, my, four, my 14th birthday in 1983. And uh, that was a, a life-changing 
That is just <laughs> unbelievable. I've told you this a hundred times before, but to see Brian Adams in 83 followed by Prime Journey, yeah. like that's, I mean, by the time you got to 86, they were kicking their rhythm section out of the band and they were kind of on the, you know, their album I had behind me. I assume that's the one, the album you saw, that was the tour they were on, Raising on Radio Tour in yeah. 86, yeah. Right. Um, but to see them Prime Journey in 83, me and Lee aren't jealous at all, Mark. Uh, I, saw, I saw them at Wembley with a foreigner cover band once. <laughs> <laughs> take yeah, it back man. Lee I'm more jealous of you <laughs> number four for me I'm going to go as we know I kind of keep it a bit more uh, standard but number four for me I'm going with Open Arms from uh, 81's iconic record as you mentioned Lee um, at Escape just it's my first ballad on the list you, you guys know i'm a big fan of the of, of the ballads but you know you've got you got john kane in the band now raleigh's gone who i mentioned on, on my last choice uh greg raleigh's out of the band and john kane comes in and we know that john kane can write a song now he reuses a melody here that was um left over that he i think he played it for john Waite in his previous band when he was in the babies and john Waite wait said that's eh, not really going to work for us Perry takes one listen to it, one listen to this opening piano melody and goes, well, tough luck on John. You know, this is, for us, this is, this is great. And what an absolute incredible ballad this is, Open Arms. I mean, it's just, you know the way we talk about songs that you, just, you don't get sick of listening to? I don't, I don't think I'd ever get sick of listening to this. You know, when Kane came in and him and Perry started, you know, really hitting it off in terms of being able to write a ballad, I think there is a point in Journey's career here where you know the ballads are starting to creep in more Sean who's up there is one of the best guitarists of all time is now off the side of the stage going you know that emoji what do I do but you know he did say I, I, I saw in an interview with Sean he did say you know that yeah he wasn't he wasn't able to play the kind of stuff he wanted to play but more women were showing up to the gigs which is great <laughs> news you know yeah. so uh, you know with Perry with the good looks and uh, the ballads, you know, it's a recipe for, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the that kind of swing. Yeah. But yeah, there was a trade-off there. You know, you were alienating some of the older fans. We mentioned that them first three albums, you know, when when Rolly and, and, and Sean started this band, they were coming out of Santana and they were going into that fusion kind of rock sound. But when they go in this direction, it didn't hurt the bank balance. So that's my number, that's my number four, Open Arms. <laughs> 